So this is going to be a little bit different than the types of videos that I normally make. But I wanted to talk about this because I think it's important that we all understand what's going on and how this type of conversation affects all crypto tribes and not just Ethereum. But essentially on Twitter, this guy Peter was talking about how he was a little frustrated with the current norm of developing in the blockchain world, saying previously people were fighting for the integrity of the system and now we kind of don't do that so much anymore. He specifically called out MEV saying, hey, MEV became an issue in the ETH ecosystem and we said, ah, really hard problem to solve. F it, let some centralized off-chain system deal with it, right? He's basically directly calling out Flashbots in particular. When Peter tweets, you should pay attention because he is one of the team leads of the Geth project, you know, the main Ethereum execution client and probably one of the most forked code bases of all time. Nearly every other EVM clone or copy chain or fork or whatever forked the Geth code base. Then we have Dankrad, whose name should look familiar because he's one of the researchers behind the dank sharding or the proto dank sharding upgrade that recently went in a couple months ago saying, hey, uh, that's super lazy of you, Peter. MEV is a huge issue and this is the best we could do for now. Stop complaining if you don't have solutions. And the timeliness of this conversation is quite apt because recently the DOJ alleged that two brothers stole 25 million from MEV bots last year. And obviously a lot of people have kind of been pointing out the hypocrisy of this. So what does this all really mean? And why is it important that we pay attention to these conversations that are happening right now and we make sure we go the correct path and why it affects all crypto tribalisms and not just Ethereum. It affects Solana, it affects Bitcoin, everybody. This conversation can kind of essentially be boiled down to, hey, we did this solution I disagree with and the response being, hey, this is the best we could do for now. But to really understand the conversation, let's do a little bit of backstory here. So MEV stands for maximal extractable value, and it's basically where a node in the blockchain can reorder transactions to make some more money. I have two videos on my YouTube channel. I did not get MEV by Flashbots and then block MEV with a bouncer where I literally live lose like a hundred bucks to show exactly how these bots work, exactly how they're real and how they are trying to steal your money at all times. We also teach about this on Cypher Updraft where basically we have MEV bots looking for transactions where they can say, ah, I found a scenario where if I reorder the transactions, I can actually make money. And usually the money is at the cost of whoever sent that transaction. So if I send a transaction to buy maybe $5 worth of ETH off of Uniswap, somebody can front run me, raise the price of ETH right before my swap. So I get a shittier price. I buy my ETH and then they back run me to sell the profit they made. This is known as sandwiching. It's a very classic attack. And what was happening for a long time was all of these nodes, all these MEV people were sending transactions with huge amounts of gas so that they could be the ones to actually get the MEV opportunities, right? These MEV opportunities are public. They're on the mempool. So people were blowing money out their butts in order to have them be the ones to actually gain that juicy MEV yield. And all these transactions on chain were driving up the gas prices of everybody in the industry. So the whole ecosystem knew this was a big issue. And we started thinking, OK, how the hell do we solve this? Well, this is where the Flashbots project came into play. They said, OK, instead of everybody sending all these transactions on chain and blowing the gas prices out the door, we're actually going to have people send transactions off chain to this super special Flashbots mempool where we're going to do these auctions for these MEV opportunities. That way we're going to save the ecosystem at large a lot of gas costs, but we're still going to get these MEV opportunities. The MEV searchers were like, yay, we're going to get cheaper, easier ways to access MEV. And the ETH community was also like, yay, we're going to have lower gas fees, right? And after Flashbots came out, there was a ton of news articles on, oh my God, we've reduced the gas prices so much because now we're doing all these MEV auctions off chain. But it's actually not just Flashbots. There's a ton of, but it's actually not just Flashbots. There's a lot of these different relays is what they're called, basically where you route your transactions to these MEV based nodes, you have ultrasound, block route, etc. And fast forward today, we can see that according to MEV boost.picks, around 90% of all blocks built today are built by people trying to extract this value, trying to do this MEV, right? So you send your transaction, you send it to this group of nodes that looks for these MEV opportunities and builds the block to get the best MEV. So maybe 10%, 11% of nodes are not trying to extract value with this MEV thing. And well, why are so many people using this? Well, 
you gain more yield. If you are looking to scalp users with MEV, you get more money, right? So you're staking your ETH. You go, ah, it would be great if I could not make 3%, I could make 5%. Cool. All I have to do is instead of running Geth, maybe I run this MEV boost thing. Boom. Huzzah. I make more money. And in fact, a lot of liquid Ethereum staking protocols like Lido and I, I think Rocket Pool as well require your nodes to look for these MEV opportunities, usually just by running MEV boost because they want to give that extra yield back to the users as well. So it makes sense. Some nodes are even required to do this in order to participate in liquid staking. But the huge downside of all of this was, holy shit, we are now taking this issue with Ethereum and we're basically outsourcing it to this centralized intermediary. Huh. Sounds a bit spooky, huh? And that brings us back to this conversation today. Peter's upset that the ETH community at large has basically said, mm, MEV is too hard. Let's outsource it for now, whatever. He's saying, hey, we should come up with a better solution. And Dankrad is saying, uh, yeah, we've tried really hard. This is the best we can do for now. And even to the point where, hey, like it's on the roadmap to kind of solve this later, but it's really too hard right now. And if you go through the Ethereum.org roadmap, you can actually see that kind of smoothing out this MEV issue is on the roadmap somewhere. But yeah, Dankrad's saying, hey, like really too hard for now. It's somewhere on the roadmap. We'll solve it later. You got any better ideas? Because we're all ears. When Flashbots and these MEV relays first came out, I was one of the people who was kind of upset. I, I literally called them organized crime. Basically, we said, eh, MEV is too hard to solve. Let's just organize so that when we do this MEV, it'll be at least easier, right? But my opinion has wavered a lot because while, yes, I 100% agree with Peter, it's super frustrating to me that we're outsourcing this super core issue with Ethereum. I also understand that right now it's really, really difficult to have a better solution. And to give you some idea of how profitable these bots have been, if we look at this transparency.flashbots.net, we can see that about half a million E has been extracted in MEV since the merge. So over the last two years, we do a little bit of math here. We'll say, you know, let's just say 500,000 ETH times, let's say $3,000 in ETH. We're talking like 1.5, 100,000 million, billions, $1.5 billion in two years or so. So Peter is probably additionally upset, right? Because he thinks this $1.5 billion is probably driving people to say, eh, hey, you know, maybe we don't care about fixing this MEV thing right now. You know what I mean? I mean, $1.5 billion. I mean, why would you want to fix that, Peter? You big idiot. Shut the hell up. But here's where it gets a little bit hypocritical for me. Basically, these two brothers exploited the MEV bots and they're getting charged right now. We've accepted that the MEV bots are not stealing. That's just how it is. The line looks very gray to me here. Hey, MEV is OK. However, MEVing the MEV bots is not OK. And that's where this kind of gets really weird to me. But the reason I bring this up and I want to talk about this is because I think it is important for every crypto group, whether you're Ethereum, Solana or whatever, to be thinking about this stuff. To what level are you OK outsourcing some of the core infrastructure of your blockchain? Now, like I said, I've come a long way. I realize more now that shit, MEV is a hard problem to solve. And probably what we have right now is the best stopgap at the moment, as much as it pains me to say that. I will still continue to run an ETH node without sending my transactions to a relayer for people to do MEV on people. But that's just me. And quite frankly, I understand how most people probably aren't going to do that. But the reason I bring this up and the reason I want to talk about this and the reason I think it affects everybody and not just ETH is for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's always incredibly important to think what are the monetary incentives behind decisions being made. It sounds like Peter is pissed in particular here because he thinks that, hey, that one point five billion dollars is really driving people to not give a shit. Dank Red is saying, hey, that's got nothing to do with it. This is a hard problem. It's on the roadmap. This is the best we can do for now. If you got a better idea, I'm all ears. Number one, it's important to think about the monetary incentives. Number two, MEV is an issue and it continues to be an issue and we need to not forget about this. And number three, I, I think it's incredibly important that we keep thinking about this and we don't lose sight of the purpose of why we're doing what we're doing. Peter makes a great point in one of his final tweets here. The problem with the current banking system isn't that they do invalid state changes. The problem is that they pick and choose. 
We recreated the exact system. We have crypto proofs instead of government audits, but the thing's exactly the same. The operators are honest in their execution, but they have free range what to execute and not execute. We're back to square one. Why are we better than them? And I love seeing these type of conversations from two incredibly intelligent people in the ETH ecosystem. I love seeing it publicly as well so that people myself can really get an understanding of what these top brains, what these people behind a lot of the cogs of our wonderful industry are thinking about. So that's all. Thanks for watching.